In this video, I want to show you basically how you can do a join in Splunk. And what that means is I have two files here with common data and also some disparate data. So here's two files in a directory that I've ingested into Splunk. You can see we have two files here. If we take a look at this first file here, it has a username and an account number. So let's take a look at that. And here we see inside the file, we have say username is and a username and account number and some account numbers. That's all great and good. In this other file here, we can take a look at what time these users logged in. So here you say the same users here in both files, they're common to these files. And you can see this user logged in at 11, 11, whatever. So what I want to do is I want to say, given these users, I want to see what date they've logged in at and their account number. Now Splunk has ingested these into itself from two different files. So the way you make this work is you have to then find a common um, name or search index in each of these. And this one, you can search on username. And this one, you can search on user colon. And then you want to put these into a search and a sub search using a join. That's one way to do it. And that's how we'll do it now. So I have some pre-made windows made up here. And let's see, this one here, we're looking at the word user. So we're trying to get user out of here. And user is in this file. So it's user colon some name in a space logged in at. So if we look at our Splunk here, we look for the word user common in all these files. And in this one, we're looking at this user. So we're making sure that first of all, we can regex out this data. So here we look at user. And here we see the um, common field is user colon and logged in at. So we look back in our data, we can say yes, user colon, the username logged in at. So we start our regex here at user colon in a space. We grab this stuff here with a star dot and we end up at logged in at, that's our end string. And sure enough, look at the regex, we look at the raw field and we take that first part of that string, user colon, and then we name here uh, a variable, we'll call it user. And then we'll use a greedy expression to say everything up to the end of it, where it hits law lo space logged in at, we'll stop. And then here, we'll look at the date. The date the same way. We'll say, okay, here's the date. The date is gonna be from, and then, oh, that's not the date. The date says, it says um, uh, logged in at space, and then there's a date. So here, look at our regex. We'll say logged in at, and there's our date read expression and the end. So this then will display from this data, we can um, run this bunk search and it will come out with the username and the date. Now, when you're doing a join, you wanna make sure this username is called the same thing. It's called user in both places. So this search on this screen, and let's find the other one here. That's the final one. And this search here is from the other file. So here now we're gonna find username and we're turning username into user. So this file username is from this left file here. We say username is, and then there's the same name and there's the account number. So here then we're gonna do a regex again. We're gonna search on username this time, username. And we'll rex it out. So username is, now notice we have a different username is here. It's different than this file, this one says username is, this one says user colon. So this is a real common thing in real life. You're gonna see two different files in Splunk and you're gonna want the username, but the log files are gonna have different um, precursors to your regex. So here we have two different regexes and two different searches on Splunk. And let's put those side by side if we can. Um, here they are, so. Here we're searching for the username. Here we're searching for user. And you can see what's common here is the actual user uh, variable, what we're calling user in both these searches. And this is this is essential for the join to work. And so this user is, is logged in at this time. Username is, what happens is these both extract the same username we're after. So in both cases, in both these files here, 
we want the same username here, this this email address here, and email address here that match these files. We want this, and we want this to match. Okay, so how do we do that? So now you can take both of these searches here, and let's line them back up again. Okay, they're lined up. So you want to take both of these searches from both of these, these screens here, and you basically want to grab this one here, grab, well, here's the finished one. So what I'm trying to do is, is grab these searches here. So I'm going to grab, say, this search here, which is Rex, username Rex, and then this account thing, grab that stuff right there. And you can make that your sub search. And the other search, which is here, this search, you can make it into, well, I keep grabbing that finished pane here. Okay, this search here is, could be your outer search. So you want to grab this stuff here, put that in your inner search, and then grab um, this stuff here, and put this in your outer search, okay? And now finally, what we get in the end, and of course, I haven't done this live, it's all canned, but it works. So in the end, we will say, I want to get user and or username. So I want to search on user and username, meaning that you want to find common data from both files and feed that into the search. So from both files, we feed into this first Rex. And this is basically our outer search. So this search here in the uh, brackets, this little search here in the brackets, this one will run first. So we put data in here and we will say join on a common name in here, we, we've called it user because we're searching for user both here and both here. That's a common name. So we get the common name called user for the same user value out of two disparate logs. And we put it in here with join. So here's the first search here. And it probably doesn't matter which search is run first in this case. So in this case, we're gonna get the common user out of searching for username and we're going to get the account number out. So this will return, the sub search will run and return the username and the account number here. And it will do a join right here with that username right there. And that username will join with this username, okay? And now on this outer search, we're also grabbing the date out. So the magic of how this runs is at the very end, it's going to run this first search It'll say, okay, I'm passing up username, and what in the second search or the, the outer search does username match with? Oh, okay, it matches with this username. So any users that are common to both these files will be found. And in the end, when these both run, we can table them as the username, the date, and the account number, which is what we wanted. And I can see that you can't see the account number here. Wait a minute. There we go, sorry about that. So there's our account number right there. So that is how to do this. And what can I say about this anymore? There's our username, date, account number from this um, join where we use the, the user field in common. I've seen a lot of questions on how to do this and I myself spent really a couple days trying to make this thing go for a, for a customer and client here where this was really, really hairy. Um, and I want to explain this how to would work for people on the internet that use Splunk. So that's how to work it. Let's again go back and review our two files here if I can. Here's the two files again, and our username here, we're extracting the same username with regex, what this username is for this username here. And for the second file, we have a, a user colon, but the same usernames. And so that allows us to relate this username and display the account and the um, date from two different data sources or two different files. So that's how this works. And sure enough, if I hit enter, this will run. You'll see it go. And if we change something around, like say, okay, let's goof up this regex. So we'll say uh, account and we'll put like a U in here or something to screw it up. Watch what happens. No data. We got account numbers out, but we don't have the user or date. Let's get it back where it was so it works. And we mess up the user on this side. Log in at, we'll put like a, an 8 in here or something. So in this case, nothing works at all. 
so it's essential to have the username and the join common. And I could probably goof this up and put like um, in the join here, let's say users, or let's put in a W or something. And it works, but you can see the values are all goofed up. It works, but the dates are coming out, but I get the same uh, user over here and the same account numbers repeated. So I saw that today also working. So if the join is wrong, it'll kind of give out bad information. So you want to make sure this user uh, is parsed correctly in both searches. This user, this user name has to match in both searches for it to work right. So I hope this helped you with this difficult subject of a sub-search in the brackets here. So again, here's our sub-search in the brackets here. A sub-search always has like a join or some word here, um, user, and then you want to put a search in there, and then you pretty much have the same searches up here, except in brackets. In the outer search, you want to first feed both searches all the data they need. So you want to give them user and username, or in this case, you might have source types, you might have indices, you got to put all that stuff up here. And then all that data feeds down in your, your outer search. And you better regex out everything you need in the outer search. And in the inner search, you'll regex out what you need in the inner search. Now, what's interesting is in the inner search, since I only care about the username and that's my file, I don't need in the, in the inner search to put in user or username. So I don't need to put in this or um, user. I just don't need to do that. So So you don't do that. Whoops, that's the wrong spot. But you, you don't need to do that. Um, where was I at here? You just don't need to do that. So you want to put both, all the data you need here in the, in the, in the first part of the search. And then in the um, remaining part of the search, you want to, the outer search, you grab what you need for the outer. The inner, you grab what you need for the inner. But you don't need to duplicate fields here. And that's one thing that really, um, confused me was um, was duplicating the fields. Okay, well, I hope that gets you through uh, Splunk here. Um, it's fun. Uh, this does take some uh, getting used to. So again, I'll go over it again. Um, you want to have a table at the very end. So here's our inner search here with the brackets. And notice that when the um, inner search at the join here, when the inner search finishes, I have a table at the very end that's piped out of both searches. So your outer search or both your searches, you can pretty much consider this point here to be both of your searches. You want to have all the data right here that both searches need. Have it all right here. And then your outer search, just take out what your outer search needs. And inner search, just search what your inner search wants to return for the inner search. But make sure this user or something or some kind of ID here is exactly the same in both searches. And you want to make sure that your regexes that get this stuff out can regex it out of each file uniquely. So this regex here for this user is not the same. I'm saying username is. And on this regex down here, it is not the same. I'm saying the username is, and see, where is it? OK, here it's username is on this in this um, inner search. On the outer search, user is um, user colon. So two different ways of getting the same ID. And that's the secret of this, is using the data from one file in this format of regex data in the other file with this format and using a common name which is used in your join. So that works. And let's see if I goof this thing up or not. I didn't. Cool. So you can mess around like join user. Um, you can say join type equals inner. I'm not quite sure what this means, but let's see what it does to it. I'm still a novice at this. It didn't change anything. What if I say outer? I was trying this today, and outer was interesting. And I found that some things I couldn't make work were working. In my case, I guess it works, so nothing's different. You can also say, um, say uh, max equals zero, and I think that gives it more columns. I didn't like that. Oh, type. Um, didn't like that. Let's see, max equals zero. And didn't change anything in my in my case. And you, you can also take all this stuff out. And it would probably understand enough to look for the common field, which is user, 
and I think it would figure out that out and work. I was read that worked fine. Let's try that out. So here we have no join, just a join with, with no field to join. And of course, it didn't work, huh? So, yep, I guess we have to say explicitly some fi some field that, that's common and it works. Okay, well, that's enough. Thanks for watching and have a great day. And I hope this uh, helps you. I've looked in a lot of um, the Splunk answers and this stuff's explained, but not real well. And I know I've gone through this in gory detail. I hope this has helped you a lot. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.